Is there a way you can inspire young, shy kids to break out of their shell and take initiative? So, stories aren't as good as roofs, but I will give you guys some inside baseball. Like, if you knew me 20 plus years ago, definitely was not the personality that I have now. It was in there, but it definitely wasn't on display, and it definitely wasn't there when I was on the floor. And that's because I don't care how good you are, how many X's and O's you know, the one thing that it takes to feel really comfortable if you are a shy or more introverted person on a gym floor is time, right? There's just no way you can get around being comfortable. And like, this is one thing that I always come back to is when we talk about introverts as coaches, man, some of the best coaches out there are introverts. They are a little bit more analytical, they're not naturally like super outgoing or engaging, but what they learn over time is they learn how to take on those traits when they're on the floor. Okay. So man, again, I'm not like the most extroverted person by any stretch of the imagination. Like if we're just out and about, I would much rather have let roof or bill or whoever hold court. I'm happy to sit back and just listen to them talk. I'm totally fine with that. Um, but again, you almost have to like switch gears. And I think introverts that are coaches that are successful know that they have to do that at some level. And you'll, you may never be like the rah, rah, super motivational guy. I don't think you necessarily have to be that. You have to find your coaching character, if you will, or your coaching personality that fits you, but you have to be able to dial it up a notch and you have to be a little bit more extroverted, a little bit more outgoing when you're on the floor so that you can be successful and so that you can create connections with people. Um, Roof, what do you think? Shy kids, young coaches, not comfortable with themselves yet. How do you get them to come out of their shell a little bit? Are, are you talking about kid? You talking about athletes? Or you talking about coaches? No, I'm talking coaches. Okay, okay. I think you you, um, you you have to put them in 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 the situation. Okay, um, you know we had a great example yesterday where um, uh, Eric asked me to do his class while Bill, he watched Bill do an assessment. And I said, sure. And we were sitting in the office talking and I said, why don't you let Josh do it? You know, I mean, that's what he's there for. Right. And so Eric said, oh, that's a great idea. So he goes out and talks to him. And he said, you know, Josh was, was really scared. He was all bug eyed and everything, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, he said, he said his eyes got like this big, you know, and all oh, this kind of stuff. So we're, of course we're laughing, right? Cause we know what's right. going to happen. And Josh went out and did a, a, a very good job. Yeah. You know, well, you know, was, was it, was it, uh, uh, you know, was it earth, earth changing? No, but I think for, and I haven't talked to him since then, but there was only a couple of times where I had to call him over and say, cause I was sitting there watching and, you know, Hey, you might want to do this at this time. Yep. You know, but that that's experience, right? Absolutely. And so, and but other than that, I thought he commanded the class well. There's some things I would have done a little bit differently, but again, it's my personality. But but sure. Josh, and this is not the running down, but you know he's got that quiet personality that you know doesn't want to take over. And he had six or eight kids there, and yeah. you know he was he it, it was fine. Yeah. You know, I was waiting for him to, to fail. I was going to have to get up, get my fat ass up out of the chair and, <laughs> and uh, you know, go help him and bail him out. But at no point the whole hour did I have to. That's great. And, and, and it was good. He knew I was sitting there watching him. Of course, Jason's coming over to peek around the corner to watch him. Yeah. You know, and I thought, I thought he did, you know, a good job of – ignoring all that and just yeah. doing what he was told to do that's awesome you know? and you know the other one the other great one i think you know is is uh is uh jason when he spoke at the at the yeah. uh at that's the little thing here. oh yes. yeah remember he gave he gave it the first time in the purple room and he gets admitted into it and you guys start killing him <laughs> for an hour. I mean, you guys chopped them up bad. I'd have, I'd have just crawled out of the thing, you know. And I'd, ne I'd never showed back up to IFAST. <laughs> you know? But he goes and practices it, 
and he gets up Saturday, and he did he did great. Yeah, was it the exact speech that he wanted? No, but he did great. Looked like he'd been talking, you know, done this a hundred times. Absolutely. And you he probably, have to, he probably gave it to you at least a hundred by himself. So. Well, yeah, that one night I wouldn't let him leave, and he was afraid at <laughs> until two in the morning, and he finally got it right. Yeah, but 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 you know, there again, you know, it's 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 uh, um, it's it's put him on the spot, and you know, one little cool thing that we did with him. Me, that I learned was just grab the guy and say, here, coach this. You don't, you don't give him time to think about what he's going to say. Here, yeah. you coach it, you know, or here, you give us this, this talk, right? You got, you got five minutes to talk about this, this, uh, uh, this topic. Yeah. Right? You're going to make it or you're going to fail. Yeah. Right. If you're tough enough, you're going to stay there, take your lumps like Jason did, yeah. and, and, and you're going to come back. And, you know, I think, you know, and that, that's, a, that's a fun little game to play with them. You yeah. know, here, you coach this. I'm going to stand here. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, stepping out on, on, off the cliff with no safety rope because you're standing there, right? Right. It's still a little nerve-wracking. Here you go. You coach this RDL or you coach this power cleaner, you know, whatever yeah. it is, whatever the other side. And I think I think you know I don't think we do that enough. Yeah. You know to put to put them in those situations and that kind of draws them out, kind of builds them confidence. You know, yeah. And then, and then you, know, you don't do it in front of the client, but you take them back later, and you and, you know then you chop him up after that. Yeah. But. Yeah. One thing I've always tried to do too is, <clears throat> you know, if I'm trying to make somebody me me more comfortable on the floor and kind of running the show, is once I know they're ready. I will deliberately not be on the floor when they're coaching because right. two things happen. Number one, if a coach is, or if a, a client is out there and they're used to me, if they have a question, they're going to come to me. Right. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the answer. I want to know if they know the answer. So that's number one. That's a really good point. Yeah. Number two is as the coach, a lot of times you're not thinking about coaching. You're thinking about how is Mike judging me as a coach? Right. right? Like yep. you need that time to kind of expand yourself and just kind of like do things on your own and get more comfortable in your own rap and how you do things. So, man, it's well, such a great point. Like at some point when you know they're ready, you have to let them sink or swim a little bit because that's when they make, they make mistakes, but that's what helps them get better. I think I, I don't know as I'd, as I'd even wait that long. Yeah. You know, when I know I'm ready. Yeah. Because you're never ready. Never ready, sure. Right? At yeah. least I don't think so. No, I agree. So you're, you're only ready after you go through that. Yeah, for sure. You know, so so I really like that point, you know, just walk away yep. or walk out of the room or whatever, and that's great. And you don't have to tell them. You just, you know, here, coach this. I got to go to the bathroom. Walk out, yeah. And then, and then you take the world's longest pee, right? <laughs> So, so you're gone for 15 minutes and now the guy's stuck, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 but that's a great point. The only, the only thing I would say is I don't know is you're ever ready until you do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, and then you get in, I can remember when I first went to center Grove and Marty grabs me out of the hallway and he goes here, coach 60 kids on how to do a split jerk. <laughs> what? I've never coached 60 <laughs> kids before. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just yeah. stood there. You know, and here I am looking around, all these kids like I'm an idiot. Yeah. You know, and, and out, though, I'm sure. uh, yeah, but you know, now, you know, I've been coaching a long time, so I, you know, figured it out. But, but I mean, yeah. you got to be put in those situations. For and sure. Then, and then, you know, you go back in and, and, you know, after the, after the session's over or whatever, then you go back and you talk to them and you tell them stories. And one thing these guys got to learn is that you got to be a great listener. Yeah. Because people will tell you stories that have great meaning. Yeah. You know, you know get, getting back to, to legends, you know, I, I played for what I consider legend. I mean, most of the guys I know still call him coach. You know, and he says, you can call me Louis. No, we're, you're coach. You know? Right. And, 
and you know I've told you about him before, but but you know if I, I you know on Friday nights we have this little dinner, Jason and I and Kyle Moran and a couple other guys, and, and so I brought him to dinner one time and and I told the guys I said shut up and listen, and you'll learn something. We got there at seven thirty and left at twelve thirty, and coach was still <laughs> going. Right, they finally kicked us out of the saloon. <laughs> and and but the stories he was telling were talking about leadership and how you lead men. And he was just telling the stories. Yeah. You know? What we didn't start on a topic or anything like that. But that's but that's how the stories. You know, it, that's the stories evolved into that, and he would tell the stories and you know how how. Uh, uh, you know, great leaders work and all, all the other things. And so, you know, they, they got the, the young ones got to shut up and listen to the old guys, you know, yep. even though, God, here comes another story. Right. You might pick up something. Yep, for sure. 